right now there is an extremely scary phenomenon, uh, but it's happening and it's real. Teenage kids are not only becoming increasingly out of control, they are becoming increasingly criminal. Criminals who steal and rob and attack with deadly weapons and in some cases murder and when asked why, just for the fun of it. I ain't scared to shoot nobody. I ain't scared to kill nobody, but you know I gotta do what I gotta do. He can steal, he could rob banks, he could kill people. Don't even talk to me. Please give me that little boy for just one day. Hello. I don't sleep because I really think that one day someone is going to come, knock on my door and tell me she's dead. She threatens her younger brother. She says that she would kill him. You think it's all funny. It ain't funny at all. You are killing me. You are truly killing me. Today you're going to hear from moms who say they're scared to death that their out of control teens are indeed headed for a life of crime and for jail. And later you're going to hear a very chilling tale from a dad who suffered a double tragedy. One of his teen sons was involved in the brutal murder of his own twin brother. Now, one of his children is dead, the other is behind bars, but before we hear from him, I want you to meet my first guests. This is maybe how it starts. This is Lori. Sitting next to her is Beverly. Both these mothers say they are disgusted and they're scared to death that their children are so out of control that they may be headed for this life of crime. Lori's son is 10 years old. His name is Derek. He's waiting backstage. Lori says that Derek not only steals on a regular basis and assaults other classmates, has kicked Lori herself in the stomach. Beverly says that her 13-year-old daughter, April, is also a living terror. She said April has stolen her car, sold drugs in the schoolyard, and carried a gun into school. Beverly says it's a matter of time before she fears that April ends up behind bars. We'll hear Beverly's story in a minute. But first, Lori, uh, I have to say, Derek is 10. He has already been with us, what, a couple of hours here this morning? Right. And he has told off one of our producers and insulted and called <laughs> one of our producers a witch, your son. He's awful. He, he, in school, he beats on kids. He uh, insults his teachers. He calls his teachers <laughs> He is very disrespectful with the principal. Out of a five-day week, my son spends at least three days in the principal's office. He's been suspended at least five times in the last two months. He's terrible. He's Have you taken him to counseling? Yes, yes, he's been in counseling. It doesn't do any good. It doesn't help. He just blows it off, does what he wants. Laura, you say that Derek can be violent, and he sent a child, another child, to the hospital. What happened? Right. He, the kid got in his face, so he just punched the kid in the ribs. Kid couldn't breathe, went to the hospital. Derek didn't care. He thought it was okay. He got suspended for it, so he got to be home another day. Now, so there's no empathy. No. I think that's a no. point we're going to get at. Not at all. Why do you think he behaves like this? I have no idea, Sally. The kid has almost everything he wants. I take care of him. I'm there for him. I love him. I support him. I have three other children that I take time away from them to support Derek, to be there for Derek. I do what Derek wants. I do his paper out with him every day. I, I'm there for him all the time. There's nothing he wants he can't have. You are always with him. Always. He steals cigarettes. He what smokes. Are his brothers and smokes at ten? His brothers and sisters, are they younger or older? They're all younger. Younger. They're all so younger. So he's setting a bad example. Exactly. Right? You say that you're here today as a last hope. You're convinced if something isn't done, he'll end up in jail. Uh, yes. what do you think could happen? Anything. Derek's capable of anything. He he may even you know, he can steal, he, he could rob banks, he could kill people. I'm convinced that he could do anything he wanted Any, to even do. Even now? Even at 10? Maybe not at 10. He, I mean, he's not... How has but this... But if it gets any worse, if I don't catch him now... How has this affected you emotionally? I cry all the time. My schoolwork has gone down the drain. Um, at night, I can't sleep. Beverly, I want to talk to you. Does this sound familiar? 
Yes, it does, Sally. Only your daughter's 13. I don't know there's yes. much of a difference. Her name is April, and she's put you through hell and back? I have been through hell and back. What is going on with April? Um, about a year and a half ago, April just made like a 360-degree turn from, you know, a good girl to a bad girl, drinking, smoking, jumping the windows, hanging out all night at all, you know, all night parties, um, being with bad people, um, lying about everything. She lies about lying. Um, just, just everything, you know, getting in trouble in school, very verbal, you know, treating me bad, you know, um, just, just everything, you know. When she jumped the window, she stays gone for some time a day. She uh, hangs out in the street, you know, all time of night, you know. Uh, and she sells drugs in school? Well, she, she got caught. You know one thing? I will never know the real true story about that. But when she got caught, they said, you know, she got caught for possession of marijuana. But I will never know the truth about that. Never now, will. you called the police on your own child. What yes. happened? Well, um, about three weeks ago, I went to work, and I told April, I saw my keys. I said, April, put my keys in my, in my briefcase, because I carpool with someone sometime. And when I got to work, I got a phone call from my middle daughter saying, Mom, you know, April took your car and is on the other side of town. So I had to call the police to get a report to protect myself because anything could have happened, sure. you know, going, you know, across, you know, town, you know, and then... Beverly, you say you're very hurt by April, who is disrespectful. How does she disrespect you? Sally, she's so verbal to me. I mean, sh sometimes she makes me feel like nothing. And, you know, I've done nothing to April. You know, for April to do these things to me, I have tried everything. You know, I don't give every April everything in the world because I don't believe in consolation. But I do my best as a single parent. I'm a single parent now. And even when I was married to my ex-husband, he was in the military. He was hardly ever there. But I've, I've done everything. She talks bad to me. She talks back at me. Um, she allowed my middle daughter to hear, you know, or she, she calls me effing bitch, you know, and stuff like that. I, I have done nothing to, and you know, to 13. deserve this. Yes. Do you think she's headed for a criminal record? Sally, yes, I really do. In my own opinion, I, I don't sleep some night. When she's out hanging with her buddies, you know, when I don't sleep because I really think that one day someone is going to come, knock on my door and tell me she's, she's dead. All right, I think it's time we brought out Laurie's 10-year-old son, Derek, and Beverly's 13-year-old daughter, April. Derek and April, come on out. <laughs> Derek, first of all, why did you call one of my producers a witch? Well, That's funny. she is. She's being real mean to me. What was she doing that was mean to you? She wouldn't let me go to the bathroom when I asked to. She's just okay. real mean. A a Risa, come on. What? You said you were mean to him. Would you not let him go to the bathroom? No, he didn't even ask to go to the bathroom. Yes, I did. I asked you if I could go. You said no. You did not say one word about the bathroom. I said to you, how you doing? You ready to do this? And how you were going to talk out there and all these things. And you looked at me and you go, whatever, witch. That's the way Derek is. And I said, you called me a witch. Derek is lying. Is Derek lying? Yeah, he didn't say anything about the bathroom. You were listening to your mom backstage. You know she's scared and upset about your behavior. Why do you do these things? Well, I asked for something. She won't give it to me. Like what? <laughs> Like what? Shut up. Derek will ask for things like to go to a Detroit Red Wings game. I can't afford stuff like that, Sally. I can't give him them kind of things. Right. I give him what he needs and what... If your mother can't afford to send you to a game, a lot of parents can't afford to send to a game, why is that wrong for mother? I never asked her if I could go to a Red Wings game. Okay, what did you ask for that your mother did not give you? Well... I asked her, I asked her if I can get this hat. No, he can't get it. Maybe she can't afford it. She had 30 bucks in her pocket. <laughs> Maybe she needed the 30 bucks in her pocket to buy food or to pay the rent. Yeah, I had $30 in my pocket. He wants an $18 hat and we still have a flight home. We still have to eat tonight. We still have to eat all week. Do you understand that, Derek? Sure. Okay. He wants me to buy him an $18 hat, 
But yet he doesn't care about the other kids that are home that have to eat, that need stuff Derek, for school. did you call your mother a fat cow and that you told us she's the dumbest person in the world? Yes. And you kicked her in the stomach? Yes. Why do you do that? She fights with me. She fights with you. So I fight back. Derek, do you smoke cigarettes at 10? I used to. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you've reformed. I don't smoke, Sally. I don't smoke. You, who saw him? You saw him outside smoking? Derek, you used to. These people just saw you outside smoking. Talk to me. Please give me that little boy for just one day. Hello. Okay. Now, what's going on with you, young lady? What is happening with you? You heard what your mother said that she's very, very worried that you may be headed for jail or worse yet, for a life of crime. I mean, I did it in the past. I don't do any of those things now. April, how long is the past? Two weeks ago? No. no, two or three days ago. Two weeks ago, I took the car, but it was like a month. It was like a month. I didn't do anything. Then two but weeks why ago. Why did you take just, the car two weeks ago? Because I, I wanted to go hang out with my friends. I, and then I had somebody in the car with me that had So that makes you right? Doesn't make me right. I mean, wrong is Did wrong. Did you have your mother's permission to take no. the car? Then why take something when you don't have permission? That's called stealing. That's what I just said. I stole the car. I took the car. How do, why do you steal a car? Well, then, because it was fun. Then? Because it was fun. Uh -uh. April, your mother says you've been caught with drugs and a gun. What is this drugs and a gun? You're 13. I can't deny the drugs things. However, the drugs were not mine. I got them from a friend at school. I was just That's beside them. the point. That's beside the point. You must love your friends a whole lot more than you love yourself. That's beside the point. Derek, what is happening at home that you act so badly? She hits me. She should. She should. But I don't hit Derek. I don't hit Derek. I spank Derek. There's a difference between beating Derek and spanking Derek. Just the fact no, I don't. When, when, you, when he was talking back to you, see, this is what he does. I mean, you you already have this. He's It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. He's already thinking that um, everything he does, you know, that's expected of no. him. It no, takes sometimes weeks. Sometimes you just feel defeated. Sometimes you really, these kids get us so down, you just feel defeated. It can take Derek weeks. It can take Derek a long time before it will be the point where I will spank him. He, I would upset. assume set him in a chair and and watch Look him. Look at him. You know, you may have you it hugged him. him? Do you I hug him? I'm sorry. I feel sorry Derek. for him. Look at him. You need to give him a hug. I always <laughs> hug Derek. Mother yes, and Dad, are they there for you? Yes. Do you know that they love you? Yes. Do you know Mother feels that you are out of control and that she needs help and that's why she's here to get help? Yes. Okay, what do you think about that? Bad. Hmm? Bad. Okay, why do you do it though? Dirt tries. Dirk has good days. Dirk has a lot of good days. But most okay. of them are just... Beverly, I want to talk to you. Why don't you turn to April and tell her what you're feeling right now? Well, you know, I, I told April um, just last week how much she was hurting me um, and how much this is really killing me. And, and indeed, it is killing me, you know. And um, April know that I love her. And I, and, and I tell her this all the time. You know, I called you just the other day on the phone when you stole my car, and I says, April, I love you. Let's just put this behind us and go on. That was you like know? last month. <laughs> last month? Okay. Well, then, let you tell it. I never show you affections. I never tell you that I love you. I hold your hands all the time. I let you sit in my lap. I fix your hair. I fix your makeup. 
I do everything for you. Everything. Okay, and then that's why I'm a criminal, huh? You bring no, April, you uh, call me criminal and you well, do April, all these things for me. Honey, if the shoe fits, wear it. You're going to have to take responsibility for your own actions. Bottom line. Stay with us. attributed to a national magazine, U.S. News and World Report. And uh, the cover story, a while back, was on teenage time bombs. Violent juvenile crime is soaring, and it's going to get worse. So, Derek, let me explain. We read this article, and the article said that kids as young as 10 years old are really acting bad. And that's what your mother said, that you're really acting bad. And that's what the producers, who watched you very carefully, said that you were doing. You were being aggravating mm -hmm. to them and you were calling them names and a whole lot of all the things that mother said have really, really been true. Now, maybe you feel very sorry about this, but you're still young enough to really change and turn your life around. <laughs> because right now, right now, it isn't good news. It isn't good news. My next two guests say their teenage daughters are already well on a life of, on the road to a life of crime. Is this Barbara? No. Barbara. Barbara says that her 15-year-old daughter, Christine, has been arrested for stealing, shot at people, dropped out of school. She is already actually leading a criminal life. That's right. What has she done? I don't know where to start exactly, but <laughs> she... A year ago or so, she stole her daddy's <clears throat> car and wrecked it. She stole his gun and sold it. She come to the house in a stolen car with some friends and stole my rent money and joyrided for days. She was susp suspended from school four times in the month of February. It just She just keeps on and keeps on, and she doesn't know when to stop. She'll go out, let her go out for the night, and she'll be gone for two weeks at a time. Now, you and your husband have to pay the price for her bad behavior? That's right. Her father has had to pay for the telephone pole that she hit when she uh, stole his car and wrecked it. We've got court costs, lawyer's fees, DA's fees. I mean, it just goes on. Every time she gets in trouble, it costs us money. We buy her clothes and she'll take off and be gone for days and come back with nothing. Everything, you know, she has no clothes left because every time she goes somewhere, she'll take them and give them away or sell them or, and then come back with nothing. What scares you the most about all of this? Well, it's just, what scares me the most is that she's on probation. And the day before she had to go to court, she did not come home at night. and was gone and come back right before court time. And then she had to, uh, it's, if she messes up one more time, she'll be incarcerated. She'll be in jail. She, they will put okay, her in jail. Let's hear from Christine and see what she has to say. Christine, come on out. Okay, Christine, you say you're not afraid of committing crimes. What have you done? I stole cars. I shot at people. Stole my mother's money. I ran away. Why do you do this? Because I ain't got nothing else to do. <laughs> nothing else to do? How about go to school? Christine, the kind of things you're doing could hurt or kill someone. Do you feel badly about that? Mm -mm. Why? Because I'm going to have to do what I got to do. What do you mean you're going to have if to If somebody do? come up in my face talking their stuff, I got to do what I got to do. What does you that gotta, mean? You got to do to, what I got to do. Shut up. If I have to, I kill them. If you have to, you'll kill somebody? Yeah. Why, why do you... I don't quite understand what you're saying. How do you feel about being in jail? Ain't no thing to me. I think she wanted to go to jail. I think she really wanted to go. <laughs> I think she I wanted to get go it. to jail. She wouldn't have disappeared the night she had to go to court. You're 15 and you have a criminal record. What do you think the future will hold for you? I couldn't say right now. No, I might end up in jail, 
But you know, I might just change, you know, you never know. Excuse me, Christina. If you haven't changed in all this time, what makes you think you're gonna change now? No, I just Let me tell you something. Where the, you know where the gangsters are these days? They're just six started. feet under or they in jail. She just started. You should straighten up and fly right and think about what you're doing to your mother. Exactly. Exactly. In other words, you don't want to do got, all the things there are to do. You just want to do something else, right? Mm-hmm. She's got out of control that she, it's not going to phase her one bit to go out and hurt somebody or kill somebody. It's not going to phase her one true? bit. Is that true? Would you care if you killed somebody? You know, if they come up in my face talking their stuff, I got to do what I got to do. I ain't scared to shoot nobody. I ain't scared to kill nobody, but you know I got to do what I got to do. You're not afraid to kill anybody or to hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. How would you feel if somebody hurt you? It'd be me, but see, if they shoot me, they better kill me because I'm going to come back for them. What about if, what if it was me? If they're coming in the house looking for you and they can just spray it along the house and, hey, I'll be gone too, your sister and everybody else in the house. Is that, would that bother you? Would it bother you? It wouldn't nope. bother you, would uh -uh. it? No. And this is Tina. She says her 17-year-old daughter, Lori, also has a police record. She's ashamed to admit that she's afraid of her own kid. She has a criminal record? She's been arrested for um, trespassing and assaulting her high school principal, the security. She doesn't care that she's gone to juvenile hall. It doesn't phase her. I've tried scaring her, telling her that there's cameras in the bathroom, you know, that they'd be watching every step that she took, and she didn't care. She has threatened the members of your family? What is she She done? threatens her younger brothers if they don't do it. She says that she would kill them. Why don't we meet Tina's 17-year-old daughter, Laurie, and hear what she has to say. Laurie, come on out. Laurie, you're 17. You don't care. You've told us that your mother is upset about your behavior. Why don't you care? Why should she be mad? I mean, it's my business. It's your business? Yeah. Laurie, you said, and I quote, I don't go out and try to see how many laws I can break, but I like living on the edge, and if that means breaking laws, that's fine. What kind of things do you do? Why do you like, what does living on the edge do for you? It's just fun, like, to go out and it's fun. see what you can do. Laurie, you told us you hate kids and actually tried to convince your friend to throw out her seven-month-old baby in a dumpster. Oh. Why? Because I don't like kids. You don't like her seven-month-old baby? I don't like babies. I don't you don't like, like baby. So you tried to talk the baby... I don't. You tried to talk like the people. baby into being... to putting put in a dumpster? Do you think that's right? No, well, she shouldn't have had her kid around me. What? She shouldn't have had her kid around me. She should not have had her kid around you. Tina, how do you feel when you hear your daughter talk this way? It hurts inside. She knows that. You know, you go for <coughs> days crying or not eating, and you get torn up little by little. April. Yes, you. <laughs> Let me explain something to you, darling. We are all denial, denial because we're powerless over drugs. You cannot sit there and tell me you don't use. You got the symptoms, baby. Okay, hold them all over your knuckles. Yes, yes. the discoloration. Let me tell you something. I you am don't need to I don't need to know you in your lucky adult. Trust me. When you look like okay. a crackhead, that means you do No crack. doubt, baby, I am a crack. I'm an addict. Well, and I'm do what you do whatever It's about health. being honest today, baby. Okay, me and my peer sister. We're here. Okay? 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 okay. All right? It's time to change. The thing Sorry, that, that upsets me is that at least two of the girls don't seem to care about the fact they may get caught and be put in jail. Uh, I think you need kind of a shocking reality check. I don't know whether you've seen jail in uh, television or not, but if you've ever been in jail and watched what happens in jail, I think it's kind of scary. So we're going to have both of you spend a day in jail. We're going to let you talk to some hardened criminals. Now, you said you don't care. We're going to send you. You can talk to these people. If it's a lot of fun, I'm sure you can do one or two things to get yourself admitted to the jail and have a lot of fun. Uh, we'll have you come back and tell us what you thought of the fun that you had in jail. We'll be right back.
Guadalupe was slashed all over her face and head with a razor and had to have over 300 stitches. It ain't funny at all. It can, today, could be, today could be the last day you live too. You can go home and it could happen to you too. that most of us feel that when we send our child off to school they will come home safely and that's what Mary thought until last week she found out that her 13 year old daughter Guadalupe was viciously attacked by two teenage girls how old were the girls 13 and 14 13 and 14 same age as April Guadalupe was slashed all over her face and head with a razor mm. and had to have over 300 stitches Mary is now scared to death to send her daughter back to school. Guadalupe, I know this happened to you last week, and I'm glad that you wanted to be here today. Uh, I know your mother has said that you are a shy and quiet girl in school. Tell us what happened and who did this to you. I was just coming out to school, ready to go home with some of my friends. And I was walking right to the bus, and then I saw them. Halfway to the bus, I saw them two girls. They were just pointing at me and everything, and I just didn't pay no mind to them. I kept on walking to the bus. And when I was about to get on the bus, they came up to me, and then the girl who was, who did this to me, she, she, oh, she was saying, let me tell you something. She didn't say nothing after that. Then after that, she just, that's when she first cut me over here. But I didn't know she had cut me until after it happened. I thought she just had, had hit me. And then the other girl, she was just, she was just trying to hit me and everything. It was real fast. I didn't know until after. Why did they want to do this to you? I had, I had gotten in a fight with the youngest one before. And then after we had gotten in a fight, I told her, just leave it alone. And then we both agreed on it and everything. And then she was like, she was like, yeah, and everything. But she had had just a little scratch over here. And then she was like, but if it stayed a mark, she was going to, she was, that's why she said, if it stayed a mark, watch, watch. But when mm -hmm. you realized what they had done to you, how uh, did you feel? <laughs> I was, I was just, I wasn't thinking right. I was just like, get me to the hospital, cause I saw all the blood and everything. Mm -hmm. Did anybody, was anybody else around when the girls did this? Everybody. To you? How many? Who is everybody? The, almost the whole school was there. Teachers, everybody. And no one stopped her from no doing one. this. No one. Not a teacher. The bus driver, he was standing right next to me. He just, he went in the bus. He closed the door. Oh, that's uh huh. So. The teachers, why did the teachers not stop the girl from slashing you? Not all the teachers were out there. They were just like the principal. And it happened real fast. Mary, have you spoken to the school about this? Yeah. What, what do they say? They were, everyone was it, around, the teachers were around, the bus driver closed the door. Um, well, they've just said that um, it happened so fast that you know, by the time the principal looked, she was already on the ground. How many times was she cut? Um, ten, about ten times. Mm -hmm. um, she, um, they were worried about the nerves in her eyes because it was so close. Mm -hmm. The ones on the other side are close to her eye. They were worried about her. It almost cut her artery. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then the ones on her head went down to her skull. Mm -hmm. Guadalupe, I want you to turn to the young girls who think that this is all right and uh, tell them how violent behavior might uh, be hurting others, like you. You think it's all funny. It ain't funny at all. It can, today, could be, today could be the last day you live, too. You can go home and it could happen to you, too. You could be going into your house and somebody don't, that don't like you could do it right to you. Next thing you know, you say, oh, I should never do that. You'll be, you'll be feeling sorry for you, too. Reality check. <laughs> we'll be right back.
are the fact. Get off my stage. We can make the point that it's bad, and you have to ask yourself, why? Why has it uh, gotten this way? A year ago, a 16-year-old boy named Michael was brutally murdered and stabbed 47 times. He was left to die in a pool of blood in his basement. What makes this all the more heinous is that uh, Michael's 16-year-old brother, David, was arrested for not only participating in this, but for masterminding his own brother's murder. Today in an exclusive interview, uh, we have David and Michael's father, his name is Steve, he is via satellite from Michigan, to talk about this horrific family tragedy. Stephen, thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome. We're th I think the first questions where one would ask is, the audience feels there's always signs that a child might be capable of such an act. Were there any signs similar to the behavior that the other mothers here have been talking about? Oh, yes, definitely, to a degree. Um, first, let me make it clear that David did not murder his twin brother. Uh, the young boy that did murder Michael has already admitted to it and is being held in jail. David is being is accused of participating in the murder and planning it. Um, what it appears to me is that uh, David and this young man were preparing to run away. Um, David had run away in the past. Um, recently, within the past year, um, he had started shoplifting, missing school, uh, lying excessively, um, he intended to run away. The other boy already had his clothes. They had skipped school and the other boy had picked up his clothes in fifth hour. David had come to the house with the young man to get his clothes. That's David's story. And of course he wanted uh, a lighter that I kept up in my bedroom drawer. Um, he said they came to the house to get those things. David went upstairs to get the lighter. Um, while he was upstairs he heard uh, Michael and the other boy arguing. Um, by the time he got downstairs to the basement, um, it had already begun. Um, David witnessed the act. Um, he says that he tried to stop it and at one point did. Um, he actually had the knife that Michael was being stabbed with. Um, somehow or other the, the boy got the knife back and continued to stab on Michael. Um, this must be very, very, must put you in a terribly difficult situation. On one hand, you want the person who killed your son brought to justice. On the other hand, you probably, as a father, have to protect your other son. Well, and I would think that that would be... There's no single word to describe what any of us have gone through. Um, I might add that we, we want to believe David to a degree. Right. We don't want... I still want justice for Michael. David should pay for what he did. Um, he chose a, a path outside of the family line. Um, he gets what anyone else in that situation should, should get. Has anyone given you any help at all? Is there any consolation? Has anyone stood by you? Um, on every occasion that I visited Michael's grave, um, the stone has been cleared, um, flowers have been set out. Um, notes have been left. Um, it's, just, it's very heartwarming. It's, it's very, it, it, it gives you a reason to have faith in kids. I wanted to give you the opportunity to say thank you to those people and also I'd like to thank you for being with us today. Appreciate it. Thank you. I hope all of you children were listening and watching, all of you were listening and watching Steve because that's why he did this. Steve represents your mother, maybe, down the road. Derek, did you learn anything being here with us today, or are you just completely bored? Yes, I learned something by what being did, here today. What did you learn? That it's wrong to be bad, and you should Aww. listen to your parents. <laughs> we'll be right back.
I'd like you to meet my next guest. She says she too suffered a parent's worst nightmare when her beautiful 13-year-old daughter was murdered, not by a stranger, but by someone who was supposed to be her friend. Marcia says that this experience has turned her life upside down. I asked Steve how it has affected his life, and I'm asking you. You are seeking justice like no one ever has before. We'll get to that in a minute, but first, can you explain what happened to your daughter, Hillary? Well, briefly, um, Hillary had just graduated from eighth grade. She was 10 days from turning 14. She'd been to a party with some friends. Um, she had, was supposed to spend the night at a girlfriend's house, and she decided that she wanted to come home. They said, uh, Stephen lives a few, blocks, you know, a few blocks away. He'll drive you home. And he uh, chose that opportunity to use a, a weapon that was a gift to him from his parents the month before. It was a jagged edged knife, the kind that's used to skin the carcass off of large animals. And he, killed, he stabbed Hillary one time for every year that she had lived. He penetrated her skull eight times, her face. He penetrated each of her major organs and he slit her throat in the car, in the automobile that they were in. And he discarded her body in um, weeds, an area that you know, multi-million dollar homes were being built. And the way Hillary was found is because two people were walking in the area in the scent of her decaying body, her 84-pound decaying body made them turn and look at her and she could only be identified through her dental records and the clothes that she had on. She was not raped. She, he just, he, when he got the knife, he thought it would be cool to stab somebody. Yeah, Stephen was out on bond for two years. While he was out on bond, he murdered his brother and raped his sister. And he murdered his brother by bludgeoning him to death with a baseball bat. And in his mind, he, w he said, I didn't want to see my brother suffer. So then he left the bedroom, went into the kitchen, took out a meat cleaver and slit his throat, then proceeded to rape his sister, then left the house with weapons that were in the house. And the police came to my house. I thought he killed my oldest daughter then. And they had us under protection for five and a half hours while they searched for him because they thought he was coming back to finish my family. How do you feel when this young lady says, I have a right to kill anybody who gets in, because I asked her, I have a right to kill anyone who gets in my face. How do you feel when I'm you hurt her I'm not sure what she that? describes as being in your face, but I know that Hillary was She means someone tiny. close to her, someone goes up close to her. I, I, why do you have that right? Who are you to take someone else's life? Who are you to destroy a family, a community? Who are you? Do you want to answer that? Man, if somebody come up my face talking about they going to fight me and stuff, I'm going to shoot them, you know, because if I don't do something now, they're going to come back later. Who told you you have the right for justice? Ain't nobody tell me that. Then where'd you get the idea that you have the right for justice? Because if somebody come in my face, I'm going to shoot them. You've got to get beyond that. You've got to get beyond that because your mother does love you. Your family loves you. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Sally. As I sat there a while ago and I heard this young girl here, the way she spoke to her mother, it tore my heart apart. Please change, darling. Love your mother. Respect your mother. Can I give you a hug, darling? Would you? We'll be right back. like you to meet Dr. <laughs> Kathleen Heidi. She is a professor of criminology at the University of South Florida. She has written a book called Why Kids Kill Parents, and I guess maybe that information might extend to brothers and sisters and friends. Number one, let me ask you if we have been wrong or exploitive in bringing a 10-year-old on. 
I worried about the fact that he is such a young kid and people are so angry at him for being bad. Yeah. With Derek, as young as he is at 10, now's the time to intervene. The mother says that she's done some things. I believe that, Sally. Uh, let me ask Dr. Heidi what warning signs might be. Well, warning signs that kids w will continue to get in trouble. We've seen a number of those today, the, the acting out, the defiance. Kids who, who get involved in violent crime oftentimes are kids that are explosively angry and don't recognize other options. They don't realize they have other ways to solve problems. I think parents have to realize that the most important job that you will ever have, mother, father, is to be a parent. And we've lost sight of that in our society. That is critically, critically important. Thank you. We'll be right back. If somebody come up in my face talking they stuff, I gotta do what I gotta do. What does you that mean? You if gotta I do to, what I gotta man, do. Shut up. If I have to, I kill her. Did you call your mother a fat cow and that you told us she's the dumbest person in the world? Yes. And you've kicked her in the stomach? Yes. Why do you do that? She fights with me. and thanks to Guadalupe and Steve and Dr. Hardy. As to the young people, uh, we may have learned something, even if you haven't. My guess is two out of four. We'll see. We always keep touch. See you next time. Some members of our audience will receive and a promotional fee has been provided by...